Apple's M series has been very impressive so far. Apple has managed to build an SoC that is not only extremely performant, but also energy efficient. As we've seen on multiple tests, these chips are very good on pretty much any task. Except one, 3D rendering. Granted, it's a niche category, so it's not big on Apple's radar, but if you're a 3D artist and a Mac user, you're kinda left for dead. You're basically better off with a PC and an Nvidia card. As you might have seen on my other video, the M1 lineup doesn't perform that great in that regard, especially when compared to the competition. And from a cost perspective, the M1 Ultra seems to be the worst performer of them all. Thankfully, the M2 lineup looks like a huge step forward. Is it still slower than the competition? Sure, but as you will see in a bit, it manages to deliver really good performance numbers. Especially if we compare it to its bigger brother, the M1 Ultra. Let's have a closer look. As I was going through the tests for this video, one thing became obvious very early in the process. It's very difficult to gauge the rendering performance of a machine, and that's because results can vary wildly from scene to scene and from renderer to renderer. On one scene, the M2 Max would be two times slower than a 3060 Ti, but on another scene, the gap would be a lot smaller. There's a ton of variables at play. How optimized is the renderer for the M series of chips? What kind of features are we using in the scenes? And so on and so forth. Right when you think you have an idea of where the results will land, everything's thrown off balance on the very next test. Let me show you what I mean. In the jungle scene, the one I've used in my previous video, the M2 Max goes head to head with the M1 Ultra. That is crazy if you think about it. The M2 Max is not even Apple's highest spec setup. It uses 30 GPU cores compared to M1 Ultra's 64 GPU cores. That is more than twice as many cores and the result is exactly the same. But then I switch to another scene and the results lean more on M1 Ultra's side. By the way, you can find this scene in Cinema's Asset Browser, so if you want to follow along and see how well your machine performs compared to the M series lineup, you can easily do so. The only thing I changed in this scene was disabling the save option. In this scene, the M2 Max is slower than the M1 Ultra, which makes sense. The top of the line chip performs better than the middle of the road chip. I would have expected a bigger gap, but at least the M1 Ultra is faster. Another thing worth noting here is that the gap between Nvidia's 3060 Ti and Apple's M series is much smaller. In the jungle scene, the 3060 is twice as fast as the M1 Ultra. In the office scene, Nvidia's 3060 is only 10% faster. That's why I'm saying it's hard to evaluate hardware when things vary so wildly from scene to scene. If I only tested the jungle scene, I would have drawn the conclusion that the M2 Max is as fast as the M1 Ultra. And in some of the other tests, it looks like that's actually the case. Until it isn't. This definitely caught me by surprise. I didn't expect this huge variance in the results. I suspect that the small caches of the M1 Ultra, something that's been fixed on the M2, is the culprit. The jungle scenes textures probably fit perfectly to M2's caches, so the system spends more time rendering compared to the M1 Ultra. But when we get to the office scene, where we have a lot of big textures, the cache size doesn't matter anymore. So the pure brute force of the M1 Ultra wins. Of course, that's just me guessing, it could be a ton of other things. In another Redshift scene, which you can also find in Cinema's Asset Browser, the M2 Max goes head to head with the M1 Ultra. It's a little bit slower, but not by a whole lot. And in case you want to follow along, the only thing I changed here was the bucket size. I set it to 512. And I've also disabled saving. This scene uses around the same size textures as the Office one. But this time, the M1 Ultra is not as fast as before. So once again, we have an unpredictable result. In this scenario, the gap between the M1 Ultra and the 3060 is a little bit wider. Here, the 3060 is 30% faster than the M1 Ultra. Where things go nuts though, is when we start testing things in Blender. Here we have two scenes, the classroom and the BMW scene. 
We didn't use the current Blender version, but the 3.5 Alpha, since it has a lot of improvements for Apple's M series. We did the test multiple times because I just couldn't believe the results. In both scenes, the M2 Max was faster than the M1 Ultra. <laughs> yep, you heard that right. The baseline M2 Max is faster than the spec'd out M1 Ultra. I find it hard to believe, <laughs> but it's true. I wish I had my hands on some more complex scenes, but I don't use Blender at all, so that's as far as I can go with it. I have no clue why the M1 Ultra is choking so hard on these scenes. The M2 Max results are just ridiculous. And another interesting thing here is that the 3060 Ti is consistently two times faster than the M series. Worth noting here is that hybrid rendering on the M series is actually slower. So if you want the best speeds possible, enable GPU rendering only. On my Intel iMac Pro, it's the other way around. For faster results, I need to enable both CPU and GPU rendering. I've thrown a lot of numbers around and I'm sure your head is spinning right now, especially with those results being all over the place. So to summarize, here's what we can gather from all this. Apple still has room to grow when it comes to GPU rendering. The gap will close a little bit more with the release of the M2 Ultra, but Nvidia is still quite a bit ahead. I have the feeling though that the M3 will be the SoC Mac 3D users will want. Rumors talk about ray tracing abilities among other interesting additions. Whether that's true or not, we'll have to wait and see. The next thing we can gather from this data is that the M1 Ultra is really, really bad value for money. You're paying twice as much as the baseline M2 Max and you're not even getting twice as much performance. Of course, I'm only talking about 3D rendering here. In any other scenario, like video editing, the M1 Ultra is a lot faster than the M2 Max. So if your work involves more things than just 3D, the M1 Ultra is going to be the better option of the two. But with the M2 Ultra just around the corner, it's worth waiting before buying any new hardware. At least that's what I'm planning to do. In all of my tests, my iMac Pro is absolutely destroyed by even the baseline M2 Max. But after 6 years of waiting, I want my new computer to be a lot faster than an M2 Max or an M1 Ultra. I'm tempted to wait until the M3, but I think I'll pull the trigger when the new M2 Ultra is out. So yeah, let's see how it goes. Anyways, I think that's about it for this video. I hope uh, you now have a better idea of M2's abilities when it comes to 3D rendering. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.